Hallelujah. Thank you, Jason, for your willing heart to serve. And it's, yeah. Yeah. It's been a little over a year ago. We really started pushing emphasis, and our giving has went up quite a bit. Uh, as Katie would say, a thousand percent. And I praise God uh, for that. But you know what? I really believe the Lord's wanting us to go a step further. Because I really believe he's wanting us to connect, not only with our foreign missions, but our local folks. And in this committee, it's the no holds bar. You know, because we want to be led by the Spirit of God. We want to be reaching out so that they'll come in to his kingdom. And we want to be servants to not only our community, but all the people around us. And everyone that's in here is a part of this committee. His committee. He's always had a missions committee. Hasn't he, Brother Curtis? Brother Curtis has always been good to put little tracks out and do. I just tell you, it's awesome how he reaches out and the different things. We've known each other for years. I love Brother and, and the Lord. He's an awesome man. I praise God, the Lord Jesus, for those who have a heart to reach out to those who are lost. And there's many ways we can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, this last September, before September happened, there was a lot of talk about what was going to happen. The Lord was going to come back. The United States was going to get hit by a meteor. There was all kinds of different talk and things. Let me remind us what we need to be looking at for our future. Let me remind you the words that were penned by the one who is returning. Let me remind you this is the book and the faith we don't so easily sway from. Because if we don't, we'll be following Matthew 24 and we'll be like those so easily tossed forth because we'll be deceived. This is your foundation. Leave that other stuff just for fun and throw it away. <laughs> but I'm just here to tell you there are signs that we saw this last September. That's drawn us closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to make light of that. But I do want to say this. There's a reason Christ and God is restraining. It's because he loves you. Turn with me, if you would, to 2 Peter chapter 3. The title of my message is, Where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? Hey, buddy. <laughs> Praise God. I don't think that was for me, but I'll take it. Hallelujah. I love the cuteness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 1. This, the second epistle, beloved, that's a term of endearment. You understand what he's saying here? The second epistle, beloved. He loves us. That's the first message you got to receive out of this this morning. Is how much you're loved. That's who you are. I watched a video last night off of YouTube. It says, who do, you know, who do I think I am? And it shows all these people holding up signs. I was an addict. I was an adulterer. I was a murderer. I was this. I was that. And all of a sudden, toward the end, he's taking pictures. This guy is. And he puts it on his guitar. And he's singing this song. And every one of their names changed to Beloved. And every one of them fell in love with Jesus. No longer labeled with the title of something that they are not anymore. Satan wants to label you with something that you are not. Your new name is beloved in God's eyes. You are loved. Now we can move on. <laughs> now I write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds. This is important. You don't want to stir up. An impure mind, do you? <laughs> He's stirring up their pure minds in a way of remembrance. In other words, they're looking back upon some of the words that they heard. Verse 2, that you may be mindful of the words of what? Which were spoken before by the holy prophets of the commandment of us, the apostles, the Lord and Savior. Not Facebook. Not end time prophecy. Not all the other in time Facebook sites you can run to. But by the words that were penned by the word of God, the prophets of old. This is what we stand upon. Hallelujah. So don't be discouraged. He didn't come in September. Hallelujah. <laughs> he 
He is coming. Hallelujah. Verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Do we not see this? Amen. Verse 4, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers have fell asleep, remember the prophets of old, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Oh, Jesus, help us. For this is they willingly, for this they willingly are ignorant. That's willfully being stupid. <laughs> That's a bad word I know. Willingly being ignorant. Ignorance is a chosen behavior to not receive knowledge. Willfully saying, I'm going to be lazy. <laughs> that's, that's bottom line, folks. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by that word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. He's talking about the judgment of the earth that was with water. He's reminding them what has happened will happen again. That's what he's trying to tell them. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, everybody say now. Yeah, we're not living in the times of Noah. They're going to be as the times of Noah, which doesn't encourage me much. There weren't too many brothers and sisters saved in the time of Noah. I'm saying, Lord, help us. And our ark is the cross. We have a greater covering, a greater way to be escaping the judgment of God now. You see, they escaped the flood of the judgment of the earth. We're going to escape earth. Let me say it again. I don't think you caught it. We're going to escape earth. When the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise and those who alive remain shall be caught up together with him. We are going to escape through that ark, through that cross of grace and mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of heavens were old and the earth standing out of the water and the waters. Verse 6, whereby the world was then being overflowed with water perished. Verse 7, but the heavens and earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. There's going to be only one day when real judgment is going to happen. Real judgment. That's going to be final and that's it. No chance of escape. That day of judgment and perdition of the ungodly men. Sin will once more be judged all over the world. But this will be it. There's no second chances. Hallelujah. Verse 8. But beloved, be not, there's that word again, ignorant of this one thing. You know, God has always made it really easy and simple because of guys like me. He made it simple. He says, well, I give you one thing to try to remember here. We always try to really mysticize and spiritualize everything. But he gave us one thing, Brother Curtis, and listen to this. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day, say it with me, one day is as the Lord a thousand years. This is key. This is key right here. And a thousand years is as one day because of his mercy and grace. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some are men count slackness, but his long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance this is the heart of the missionary because it's the heart of Christ. It's the heart of God to reach everyone. We should never be inclusive in any level at all. Never, period. As believers, we should run to the lost with open arms and say we love you. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord, there is always, what's the day of the Lord? Oh my. Remember what we just read? A day is how long to the Lord? A thousand years is what? Remember that. You're going to learn something today. I did. I can learn things too. Okay, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away in a great noise, and the elements shall melt in the fervent heat, and the earth and all of its works therein shall be burned up. Here's some teaching for you. Now realize, this, is, this, this verse is about a thousand years old and long. Because here's the thing. 
He said, the day of the Lord will come as a thief of night. He will come, catch his bride away. And then there's seven years of tribulation. And then after seven years of tribulation, he shall come back again. The beginning of the last day, the thousand years. A thousand years is a day, a day is a thousand years. He shall come back, we'll rule and reign with him. Then at the end of that, and then it talks about the destruction of the earth. Melting as with fire, the heavens and earth roll away as a scroll. A lot of people want to say, oh, the end of the world's coming. And I've always told him, I says, well, he's got a, this earth's got a thousand seven years left. He goes, why do you know that? I said, because I ain't gone yet. And after I'm gone, you can wait seven years and I'm coming back with the Lord. And then there's a thousand more years. You got a thousand seven years and then today to get it right. But it'd be easier for you today if you get it right. So most people are, you know, the movie Armageddon had it so messed up. You know what I'm saying? Why would you title that Armageddon? It's just another war. It's just another catastrophe. Things happen to the earth, but he's reserving the earth for a final judgment. Hallelujah. Seeing then that all these things are going to be dissolved, what manner of person ought we to be? And it says it right in the sentence. In all holy conversation and godliness. You see, the words we say and how we converse shows what's in our heart. It needs to be holy conversation. If you're going to have holy conversation, you're going to have to have a holy man of God in you. His name is Jesus. His name is the Holy Spirit. If you want to have holy conversation, you need to be sanctified, purified, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't work this out with religion. It has to be through the power and the grace of a Savior named Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, then all these things are going to be dissolved. What kind of man ought you to be, woman? You ought to be. Verse 12. Looking, hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. That's not lazy. That's not ignorant. You want how to get rid of ignorance? Be diligent. Study the word of God. Know for yourself what it says. Not what I, just, I would say or any minister would say on a Sunday morning or Wednesday. You need to dig in the word of God and then actually work it out in your life. Put some hands and feet to what God's word says. Be diligent. Hallelujah. That you may be found with him in peace. You know, I've come to find out when I start slacking back and thinking I'm exhausted and tired and don't, I find myself starting being restless in my mind and my thoughts. I find myself starting feeling uneasy. You know why? Because God's spirit isn't built that way. He's diligent, always doing the things of God, seeking the face of God, doing the works of God. It's your DNA. It's who you are. You live it out. Hallelujah. Without spot and blameless. Verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, verse 16, as also in his epistles speaking them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also with their other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Verse 17, Therefore, beloved, seeing you know all these things before, beware lest you also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. I love that part of the verse where he's telling them, he's giving them instruction to stay diligent in the word of God. Verse 16 talks about how the epistles were speaking into them and giving them the word of God, but how they were so easily led astray because they did not have a hunger for the things and the holiness and things of God. They were young and immature and they needed to be growing up in the things of God. And this happens by seeking the word of God. 
and letting him grow in you richly toward you all the time. There are three things you need to remember today. And I took it from the title of the one song I sang always. Our God is always faithful. Our God is our redeemer. Our God is our healer. He's always there. Listen to this. There are three things you need to know. Remember today, God is, number one, always in control. It may look like chaos. Chaos abounding. You know what I'm saying? All trouble all around us. But guess what? Not inside of you. You know how you let chaos in? You have to let it in. You're the one that has to open yourself up and go along with what the media says. And what Facebook folks might say about you. Who or what do they say who you are? How are they labeling you? You need to realize who you are. You are a daughter and a son in Jesus Christ. You're a child of the king. That's who you are. You need to remind yourself sometimes. And stop letting Satan beat you up. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's always in control. Verses 7 and 8 of 2 Peter 3 says this. But the heavens and earth, which are now by the same word, his word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of these things, one thing, that one day is of the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is in control. And the bottom line is, it's not about all the judgments. It's not all the... That, that's... That's the last thing on God's mind, what he wants to do. You know, we live in the days of grace. He loves us. He's in control. It may not seem like the folks that you're praying for, that he's in control because they've still got the habits, still got the troubles, still got the struggles. But guess what? He is in control. You need to let him work out what he needs to work out in their lives. Your marriage may seem like it's out of control. No hope. You feel like, no, there's no other way out except through the words and the wisdom of men. And God says, not so. When we give our lives to him and commit our lives to him, he's able to work things out. He give him control. Let me say that again. If you want to stop being in chaos and feeling pressure and defeat and feeling depression and all those things, give God control. He is in control. He will work out the things, the things we think are so important in our lives. We think we have to do. We have to figure out. And we wind up strangleholding our own lives and allow our mess in our open lives up because we worry and concern about things we have no control over. But he does. I said, but he does. If you'll take it to the closet of prayer and say, God, I really give it to you. See, so many times we walk into our closet and we really pray and we really mean it. But then in our hearts, we're walking back with that same burden. Let me give you a word of advice. When you feel that in your heart, that it's still burdened, and you feel like you're still under condemnation, stay and pray. Stay and pray until God touches your life, and you feel as light as a butterfly. And you feel the peace of God in your life. He is in control. You see, this is just, you're just as important as he is about the end time events around this whole world. Because it's always about the lost. It's always about his church and keeping them in the Lord. He's in control. Number two, God is always keeps his word. He always keeps his word. But remember, to us, we want it now. Instant gratification. I read somewhere that uh, people want to reap a harvest of seeds they've never sown. Let me say that again. People want to reap a harvest from seeds they've never sown. They don't want to do the work. They, they, I said they don't want to do the work. They don't want to get in the word of God, but they want the blessing. Remember Simon the sorcerer, who was following the disciples around. He noticed they were healing and people laying their hands. He said, hey, how much is that? I like a little bit of that. He said, may you... And the words you said, be cast into the pits of hell. Basically, judge them. Then he said, oh, please forgive me. The thing is, we want to see God move. 
But are we willing to pay the toll? Are we willing to pay the time to sacrifice? What's it going to take to bring us to our knees? Does the earth have to shake? Hallelujah. Before he brings us to our knees? Or is it the very fact that we serve an awesome God and he deserves our praise? He deserves our worship. He deserves our lives. Hallelujah. Verse 9 and 10 says of 2 Peter 3, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away, and the great noise and the elements shall melt and with fervent heat. The earth also, the works that are therein, shall be burned up. God holds no judgment against the things you guys take pictures of. You think he's angry with the trees and the, and the rivers? No, 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 no. When he talks about the world and judging in by fire of the world, he's talking about the sinful nature. The earth was cursed because of the fact of man's sin. Man's sin is what cursed the earth. Now God will judge that sin in the end time. He will judge the very fact that sinful nature was brought into the existence. And he will burn it up with fire. You see, fire is a purifier. It's a sign of power, but it's also a sign of cleansing. That's why when the Holy Spirit came down, he came down as tongues of fire. Because he's come to purify his bride and also give her power. Amen? Hallelujah. Finally, God always is right on time. He always is. You know, the older I get and the more, I, the more you get involved with trusting God, the more you find out you just walk in peace and this, it, it just happens. It, it, let's say it again, the life and the spirit of God in the life of a Christian, it just happens. You find yourself praying more for others than you do for yourself. You find yourself doing more for others than thinking about yourself. Because you start having the DNA of God and Jesus Christ in your life. He will cause you to walk and talk and look just a little bit more like Jesus Christ. He is right on time. So many times we get caught up and we get so busy in our own lives, we forget and leave God out of the picture. I would say in every area of your life, put God in your picture. Hallelujah. Verses 10 through 14 of 2 Peter 3. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away. A great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All the works. The works that man try to hide. They try to bury it under the rug, so to say. It's going to be exposed, folks. All sin and iniquity is going to be exposed. It's going to be burned up and melted away with a fervent heat. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for the hastening of the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens, a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Can you imagine a world that's not filled with sin and corruption and lies and deceit, that if they actually had a political debate, which would be God versus himself, and, and he would win. <laughs> and you know everything he said would be the truth. Why is it that we lean so heavy upon the ideas and the opinions of men? Why do we cast our lot so many times this party that party, this guy, this guy, they're all men and women. They're all flesh. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Pray for your leaders. They need it. Hallelujah. Even so, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. They need prayer. They don't need us to follow them by no means. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Verse 14, in closing, Wherefore, beloved, that's you and I, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, that you may be found in him in peace without spot or blameless. The word of God says when he returns, will he find faith? And he's not just talking about a faith in any God, any religion, as which is being preached today. Just believing in something does not get the work done. Those folks are still living in unrest. You know how you know? Because they want everybody to agree with what they believe. I, I, this is what I believe, but you got to believe it with me. That's a sure sign they're not happy with the skin they're in. If you're happy with who you are, you don't need no one else's approval. I am happy in the Lord. I am happy with who I am in the Lord because it is not me that lives. It is him who lives in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he's put a deposit in me, Brother Curtis. He's put a deposit in me, brothers and sisters. And you know what? I've been put in layaway. Christmas is coming. <laughs> and it ain't Santa Claus. Hallelujah. It's the son of the most high God. He's saying, I'm coming to get what I put a deposit on. And here he is. He's mine. You've been sealed to the day of redemption by the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that? That's what you need to put your faith and hope in. Don't be concerned. Where is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, he's coming. He's coming. And he's coming soon. But you know what? These eyes may not behold it. That's why I have to be diligent. So more than me knows about it. So more than me knows and had the calling of Jesus Christ in our life. That's why we need to advance and go forward. Like with the missions committee. It should always be about ministry in the church. Always. You can have a good time ministering for God. We have a good time doing works for God, handing out candy to little kids, and you never know what's going to show up. A dog in a lion's outfit. <laughs> I'm sitting there in my chair because I'm not diligent at that moment. I was resting, handing out candy, and all of a sudden, underneath my arm, I'm getting to put it down. My arm just goes up, and there's this dog, whoop, right in my nose, right there. Where's my muffin? He just looked at me like, okay, guy, you're the one guy that does the muffin thing. Where's it at? We was at their place and they had a muffin in my mouth, trying to get him to give me a little kiss, the little doggy kiss. And he, uh, took, in, uh, he took it from me very begrudgingly. But the next time I see him, though, he's whipping around looking at me like, where's it at? So I got to keep me a little pocket full just in case he comes around. I'll hand it to him. How's that? Praise God. But you need to be diligent. You need to be doing the works of the kingdom of God. And whatever you do, do it with all joy and enthusiasm of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It becomes like a magnet to the lost. They want to see people that love each other working together in love in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let every head bowed, every eye closed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe this morning uh, there was confusion brought into your life about the end times because although many things are being said, maybe that was you this morning and you were like, well, where is Jesus Christ? What, what is really a sign of his coming? If that's you this morning, just lift your hand, Lord. Anyone here that there was a little bit of confusion that was brought into your life because of things. Well, this is a good sign. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe this morning you would say in your own life, I want to be more diligent. I want to be more in fire and love with God, with his Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to follow him with all my heart as never before. I want to know there is, I don't want these, yes, I see that hand. Anyone, just lift the hand, Lord, all across this room. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. You can look at me now. Praise God. I believe every one of us. Yes, Chase, God sees that hand. Hallelujah. 
I can't wait to see what God's going to do in some of these young kids' life. You know what? And some of us, we're slow learners. And we are. We're adults. But those young minds, I cannot wait to see in the next five, ten years where God's going to take some of these kids. Yeah, I love it. That's why, you know, I want to see the Lord come, but there's still souls that need to be saved. There's still lost folks out there that don't know the Lord. And I know once He comes, the door's shut. It's hard. It's hard to get in now. What do you think it's going to be like then? That's why, like Paul said, for your sake, for your sake I stay. Though in my body, my flesh, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I want us all to have that heart for the lost. The same heart that Jesus had. The same heart that the Father has. Amen? If we get that DNA in our lives, can you imagine?